So yes, I'm totally stoked that the Olympics are here right now. If you guys are following this playlist that we put together of all the different signs to the Olympics pieces that we're collaborating with, then you'll know that right now we're talking about ski jumping. And you'll probably have just visited this page from this video, which is the basics of ski jumping. If you haven't seen that one, check it out first and then continue watching this video. Okay, we're gonna look though at the variables of ski jumping. Okay, so I have thought a lot about the physics of ski jumping. I mean, you get it in physics problems, and it looks a little bit like this. A skier of mass X heads down the ramp with height X. What is the velocity as he leaves? What is the distance that he can go? Now here's what I can tell you. Olympic ski jumpers are not easy to plug into an equation like this because of the variables. So here are the variables. The first is friction on the ramp, which means you want really slick skis with very little friction. And everyone does a pretty good job of doing that. Now the second is reducing wind resistance going down the ramp. That means you need to crouch down in an aerodynamic position. Again, pretty much everybody does that easily enough. Third, jumping at the end of the ramp. Now this seems a little bit trickier. This jump gives you extra height, but it also sets up your angle for the flight. To upright, you have lots of drag to horizontal and you really risk a crash. Now this flight is actually the biggest variable. You see, you want to fly and boy, can you ever fly when you're ski jumping. All right, so just to give me a feel for how much we as humans can manipulate our own flight with the wind, uh, I've come right here to I Fly Dallas to uh, try it out myself. So watch this, I can actually walk into the tunnel just like this. The wind doesn't seem to do anything to me. Of course, that's because I have a very sleek body position. It's the sleek position that ski jumpers want to put forward when they fly into the oncoming wind. Now, watch what happens when I open up to the wind. <laughs> I can just levitate above the ground. How freaking cool is that? Now watch how you can move around the tunnel just by manipulating the wind a little bit. And I'm not even moving that much. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Of course, I'm not a pro, so check out this footage of some of the really good free flyers. So the point of me doing this was just to show you how people can use the wind to really fly. And the thing is, ski jumping is not all that different from uh, flying in a tunnel like this. It takes a lot of time to get good. So I have a lot more respect for really good ski jumpers because it's all about flying. <laughs> Alright, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to watch all of our videos. And make sure you watch some of the other YouTubers we teamed up with to do these Science of the Olympics. Um, if you didn't watch the playlist already, Click on this to kind of backtrack and start from the beginning because it was a really good and really fun series. All right, we'll see you next time. Yeah, the way our tunnel's set up, the fans are actually on top of the tunnel, not below. Um, the whole building is actually part of the tunnel. We have built columns down the side of the wall. Um, so basically those fans suck air up, shoot it down the sides of the building and back up to the basement. So it cuts out the turbulence. Um, it cuts out the dead space between the air and the glass. Most places you can fall off the winch. That does not happen here. Um, so yeah, as far as technology goes, we have the nicest, newest, cleanest, best tunnel um, in the world at the moment. And that is until our new locations open. So we're just one-upping ourselves, really. <laughs>